So AI video has audio now? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, no audio, no good. <laughs> Why do I feel like this is deja vu? Hey ladies, what are you talking about? The year has opened, car behind one second. Break balance, okay? Focus entry. Perfect line, maintain pace. 특정 값을 불안정해. 다시 보정해야 해. 알겠어, 설정 값을 바꿔볼게. That was a close one. I'm getting too old for this. Weapons hot. Shields at 40. Good people of open art, today we're going to take a look at Seed Dance Pro 1.5. And this video isn't about whether it's better than the other models. It's more about showing the capabilities of the model and would it fit your current workflow. So to get started, as always, we're going to head to the top menu here. As always, you can also access it from the side menu. We're going to go ahead and start with text to video. From the select model dropdown, we want to select Seed Dance 1.5 Pro. In going over the settings, you see that you can go between 4 seconds all the way up to 12 seconds. Currently, we only have 480p and 720p resolutions. 1080p is to come. We don't have API access just yet, but we will in the coming weeks. You have your typical aspect ratios, then you have the option of toggling on or off the audio. And to start off, I want to show you this four character dialogue where each character has a line. And we want to look at things like their gestures. Is the dialogue natural? Of course, the quality of the output. Let's take a quick look at this clip and then I'll show you how we prompted for it. So what's the big deal about Cedence 1.5? Well, there is multi-conversations. Not to mention multi-language support. And native joint audio and video generation. Like many of the current AI video models, you can just use natural language to prompt for the video. I will call out this video was done with image to video, but originally this prompt I created with text to video, which I'll show you the example in a minute. So the first part of the prompt is describing each character, which really wasn't necessary for image to video. I just decided to repurpose it. However, I wanted to focus on the dialogue. So we see the huntress woman starts with the conversation and she says, so what's the big deal about Cdan's 1.5? The orc replies, well, there's multi conversations. Then the sorceress chimes in and says not to mention multi language support. And finally, the knight replies and native joint audio and video generation. If we listen back to the dialogue, it does sound somewhat natural, except for the night at the end where it kind of does sound a bit AI. Let's have a listen again. So what's the big deal about Cedence 1.5? Well, there is multi-conversations. Not to mention multi-language support. And native joint audio and video generation. Not perfect, but does a pretty good job for four people in a scene. And I will tell you off the bat, it took me a few generations to get this right. Sometimes you'd have two people speaking at the same time, or the character would be out of place when they're talking. And I mentioned this because, you know, some people have that expectation that generative AI is this perfect thing that you can do in one shot. Unfortunately, that's not the reality. That's not the case. It may take a couple of generations. Sometimes it takes four or more to get the exact shot that you want. Let's take a look at the text to video version. So what's the big deal about Cedence 1.5? Well, there is multi-conversations, not to mention multi-language support and native joint audio and video generation. <laughs> In this example, I switched the order where the knight spoke third and the sorceress spoke at the end. That was the only difference. But in terms of the cinematic quality of text to video, it looks very lifelike. The orc here looks more like Shrek <laughs> than an actual orc and does look CGI. Considering it's text to video, it's not bad. 
And we do see this funky cup here. This one has wood where these are glass. And then we see it transform into glass. So going back to my point, sometimes it just takes a couple more generations to get the perfect shot. Four character dialogue can be challenging, but I find with one to three characters, the dialogue works very well and very accurately. Now, the difference with this scene is that I did more of a multi-shot sequence along with adding dialogue and a little bit of background music. Let's preview it together and then we'll take a look at the prompt. Thanks for taking me out tonight. Yeah, um, of course. You, um, look amazing. Are you trying to make a move? Maybe. Then what are you waiting for? This prompt was quite lengthy only because this time I prompted for each shot. Here we've got shot one front facing medium shot. I won't bother reading the whole thing because it's so long and as always I'll leave prompts on a Notion doc that you can use if you want to follow along. Basically this is done in an anime style and then we have actions like the woman stops, the man notices, she steps slightly closer to him and says thanks for taking me out tonight. So we see that in the first few seconds. Thanks for taking me out tonight. Shot two, we cut to a front facing close up of the man, which we see here on the left. He pauses and says, yeah, um, of course you, um, look amazing. Kind of awkward as some men are. Yeah. Um, of course you, um, look amazing. Then we see another cut to a front facing close up of the woman. She takes a step forward, closes the distance, smiles and says, are you trying to make a move? Are you trying to make a move? Then we see another cut to shot four where he simply smiles and responds softly, maybe. In shot five, we see another cut where she responds, then what are you waiting for? Maybe. Then what are you waiting for? So you could be very descriptive in terms of each shot that you want. And you see that the character remains consistent. And it's a bit easier to be consistent when you're working in 2D cartoon. Generally, if you want to keep consistency, it's best to do image to video. But just to further emphasize, natural language also works. If you read through this prompt here, you're going to see that there are different shot compositions without stating shot one, shot two, just natural progression. And you want to use words like, then it cuts to the dog. Next, the shot cuts to the third shot. Finally, it cuts to a close up of the owner. You always want to state the ending of the shot and the start of the new shot. This food is good. I promise you'll like it. <laughs> so, you like it? Let's call out the obvious. The dog, when he starts eating the food, he's kind of just licking the food. You don't see him actually eating it. Certain models do eating better, and it looks like C. Dan's Pro needs a bit of help with proper eating methods, at least for dogs. Now, the folks over at Bite Dance are really taking pride in things like camera movement and camera motion. And as you see in this Hitchcockian type of camera movement, where there is sort of a different zoom effect where the background zooms out and the subject sort of remains in the same composition. Here's a different variation of that, but this was widely made popular by those Alfred Hitchcock movies and it's definitely a cool effect. And the key wording here in this prompt is Hitchcockian camera movement. Keep the man's main composition unchanged, dolly out and increase the focal length of the lens. It gives you sort of a push-pull effect when that transition happens. It's a really cool effect if you're doing suspense or thriller. Here I'm going to show you two different side-by-sides of a panning up shot where your subject starts at the bottom but the camera pans up and changes its focus to another object or person. Once again, this is a very common cinematic camera movement that you would see in many of the popular movies. Now I want to take a look at adding music to certain scenes. In this example, I just copy and pasted a description of Atlantis, pasted it into the prompt without really specifying what kind of background music. Let's take a look at the examples.
Taking a look at the prompt here, you see it's just a description of Atlantis, and it naturally wanted to give it sort of this epic cinematic trailer type of background music, right? Similar thing with this clip where I prompted for a grand epic aerial video with the camera passing through the mountains, shrouded in clouds, having the castle be revealed. But this time, I did prompt for a heart-stirring symphony as background music, featuring a theme melody full of strength and hope. So you can steer the music in a particular direction just by prompting for it. Next, we'll take a look at a few examples with the character dancing to music, as you can see here. And this one is more of a hip hop vibe. Now this prompt is too lengthy to share. Check out the doc for the full prompt. However, I will say with dancing, especially for hip hop, there's still quite a bit of improvement to be made with certain genres of dancing. Like in this example, where it's still supposed to be a hip hop dance, but kind of looks like she's just learning how to dance. So personally, I wouldn't use this model for dancing. Kling, even Hailuo 2.3 does way better with dancing. With that being said, if you're looking for more artistic dance interpretations, this model is capable of doing that style of dance. Next, I want to show you a quick example of using start and end frame for this perfume product called Stanky. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And first we see the starting image here, and then we have it transition into the secondary image with just a bit of dialogue and background music. A name like this invites assumptions. Fortunately, assumptions fade. Stanky. Going back to the issue of keeping your characters consistent in video, there are a few things that you can do to ensure consistency. And part of that is understanding the limitations of AI video. As mentioned before, if your character's face is lost or they look away or they're off frame, chances are you're going to lose consistency there. So as much as possible, try to have your character facing the camera or use multi-shot compositions. Whether you do it in one shot or you do quick four second increments and in using image to video. Image to video is the best way to keep your characters consistent because you can just generate start frames for each scene and utilize start and end frame. It's much easier to keep consistency with images because you're only generating one image at a time. With video, there's 24, sometimes 30 frames per second. So each of these frames have to be generated multiple times. And oftentimes, if you have a full body shot and they're tiny in perspective, that's a recipe for disaster. It's very difficult to keep those little details consistent as the camera moves. But with that being said, I want to do a follow-up video very soon to really go in depth about keeping your characters consistent with AI video. As always, my friends, let me know what you think in the comments below. And in case you haven't heard, we had just released Character 2.0. You can check out one of the videos with our guest host, Bob Doyle, and the other video is a little bit more in depth on how to use the new Character 2.0 feature. Until that next video, my friends, Happy creating.